No, I love that your dog is like premiering right now on our podcast. Wait, what's your dog's name? Enzo. Enzo and Bentley. I think I remember that- Bentley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So cute. You've yeah. had <laughs> we were just talking about how when we first connected, it was 2013, which is it feels to me like a lifetime ago, and yet it it's almost like it wasn't that long ago, but I'd like to know for you because Ariane, you, and I call you Ariane. I know a lot of people call you Ariane, but Ariane. Oh, you say it. <laughs> Ariane, is it? Oh, is it <laughs> it's how it's pronounced, like, because your background, so you're Mexican, Filipino, and there's a mix of other things too, right? Spanish, yeah. Spanish. Okay, cool. We're going with Ariane. Yeah. So I would love to know, I mean, you've done so much. And when you hear, that it's been seven years and you think about everything that you have lived and experienced and learned and where you are now about to, you're like blooming into mommyhood. How does that make you feel? (laughs) Uh, it just, it's just so crazy. Life is crazy. Um, been through so much in the last couple of years. I've grown so much as a person, I think for the better. Um, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. I feel like, uh, every, every year and every step is a, is a different lesson, a good, a good thing. So, yeah. 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 I mean, you, there's so many areas that I want to go into conversation with you because one thing that I do want to say right off the bat, it's so clear to me. I remember this just like it was this morning. I remember when we first connected. So I did your makeup. We had a two day shoot. I think it was a two day shoot. I don't remember, <laughs> but I just remember how, you know, you were so genuine and you were, you're such a girl's girl. You were so supportive. We were, you know, trying to collaborate. Remember that fun video we did? I remember like making, (laughs) yeah, it was fun. It was fun (laughs) with like egg whites. And at the time I didn't even eat eggs. Oh my gosh. Um, but I just remember that you, you were just really, you were lovely and you were, you know, so supportive. And I, you know, just to, you're very girl, like pro girl. And I, I, I wanted to put that in this conversation. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of impressions. You know, you have lived a very robust career. You, you're like a fucking badass entrepreneur. You're a pro babe, which is not easy. FYI. (laughs) And I'm excited (laughs) to talk about that. But, you know, I really, you know, one thing that I value is authenticity. And I really love when I meet women who are just really you know, supportive to other women. And that I remember so clearly from day one with you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, we're all on a di- different journey. We're all into other th- different things, but um, I think it's easy to look at people and kind of judge them. And especially like with my career, it's been very like babe oriented. So um, that can be very intimidating to people. And, and I think that the beauty of everything that I'm going through right now is that, um, as soon as you like become pregnant, it's like, you're part of this club and like all the moms just want to like give advice and help. And it's, it's been really cool, um, to get that because other than that, like I've not that I've been closed off, but I've just been very, you know, business, business as usual. I don't, I don't go too far with like my personal life and stuff, but with being pregnant, I think that I really wanted to put myself out there and be able to connect with women in a different, whole different way. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. That's, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast right now. I mean, you're literally about to, to have your baby, right? When are you due? Very soon, right? Yeah. I'm due the end of September, but I feel like he's going to come the first week of October. Oh, you do? That's amazing. I'm hoping. You're hoping, <laughs> yeah. I, I think mean, he'll be a Libra, but but um, you think I he'll just, be a Libra? <laughs> you're so cute. Well, I mean, I feel like mommies have intuition. You know, I mean, we all have intuition, but I feel like you do have you know a little deep insight to what may be the case. Like when you're, but you're having a boy, right? Yes. So, yeah. excited. do you have any names? We have a few picked out, but. Me and my man, we want to wait till we see him. And we're like, okay, um, this is his name. Like, he looks like this is his name. So we're waiting. We're going to announce it with everyone, including the family, too, once we. 
time. So it's so exciting. <laughs> it's so amazing. And by the way, such a testament to, you know, you, you, when I said you're a badass entrepreneur, I mean, you've really done an excellent job of building a brand, you know, and there's so many layers to your brand. So it's one thing to be, you know, a beautiful woman who has really done a good job of leveraging her beauty and created this whole career, but you like, you have, you know, girlfriend boss. I mean, you've done so many things and I feel that as a brand owner and developer, you got to have strategy. You know, when you say that you were more closed and really business focused, I think one of the things that I've really received about you is you do have a very stoic way about you. And I, I feel, and I'd love to know your thoughts about this. I feel like it's, it's really served you well. I mean, when I think about, it's hard to be a woman, period. It's hard to be a human. Then it's hard to be a woman. And now you're this woman who has a huge platform that has just grown and grown and grown. You're, you know, you're out there and you have to, you know, there's so much opinions and judge and all kinds of shit. And you've done such a good job at just holding your shit together. I I've never seen you. I've never even felt you like yeah. be swayed by the whatever negativity or drama or anything that could, and I'm sure there had to be a lot of it. I mean, judgment period. Right. Um, and it's, it's such a, you know, to go back to where I started with this is, you know, you're about to have a baby and, you know, we put this podcast together last minute and you could have totally just been like, uh, no, you know, I'm like about to pop like mommy, you know, but you're like, let's make it happen. Like a that's supportive, you know, to, you know, females, like I was saying, and also just like, you're a hard worker. And I'd love to talk about that because I want to peel off these layers that maybe some people don't know about you, you know, when it comes to having strategy and building a brand. And I know you went to school um, for fitness management and nutrition, and then your career shifted when you started modeling. And then you've been with the UFC for how long now? Forever. 14 <laughs> in years. That's so crazy. That's amazing. So amazing. What do you feel has been some of the most supportive tools internally, like the intangibles, the characteristics that have really helped you to stay stoic, to stay strong, to ward off negativity, and to, to continuously strategize to build your brand and your businesses? I think um, staying mentally, um, mentally strong because when I signed up for UFC, when I started working for UFC, I had no idea that I was going to be thrown into the limelight. And um, when I did, it was kind of nerve wracking. And then I started like, this was like years ago, but I would like obsess over what people were saying, what people were thinking. I, I even had like Google alerts set on my phone and I would read some of the stuff and it would really hurt me and it would really like piss me off. And I was just like, a one day, even my mom used to do it too. I was like, you got to stop that. And I got to stop that because it's just, it's driving me nuts. And at the end of the day, what people think, it doesn't matter. It matters how I feel. And um, so I, I stopped obsessing and I started doing more like mental work where like talking to a therapist, um, doing hypnotherapy, like there's a lot of better myself to where there's not a lot that can really upset me unless it's super, super bad. Yeah. Um, I just try to stay level-headed no matter what. I know there's always going to be people that talk crap and like be, putting my pregnancy out there. was su super mm. nervous. I was like, Oh my God, what are people going to think? Blah, blah, blah. Like I've, I've been this thing forever. And like, it, it's a huge change, but again, it's like, it's not about what people think about you. It's about how you feel. So I really just started doing work on myself, on the inside, everything from meditation, to yoga, yoga, like, oh my God, changed my whole life. Like I, I've always been like the girl that wants to do like these tough, like high intensity workouts. And I used to look at yoga, like, oh man, I don't have time for that, you know? <laughs> and then I found like, a, it was like hot yoga that really like slowed me down, but also was intense at the same time. And I just felt so good. So it's certain things mentally and physically that I did to just better my life. Um, 
And also like the people that I surround myself with. I think that I'm especially now just surrounded by authentic people that really love me and that I really love that we would do anything for each other. So, um, yeah, it's just about weeding out the weasel. (laughs) Yeah, no, I love that. There's so much there that you just said. I mean, I love that you actually took steps to talk to a therapist and to, um, do hypnosis, which I've been so curious about that, that, you know, cause I know there's a lot of science behind, you know, the benefits of doing that, you know, but rather than becoming a victim of yeah. which you could have easily fucking done, you know, it's, that's hard. You, yeah. you, you decided to, to completely champion yourself and you took ex- extra steps. And I love that you talk about yoga because girl, I, I just, uh, I did a podcast this week, um, with one of my really good friends who's an incredible yoga instructor and she does a lot of yin yoga hot too. Right. And yin is more slow down. Um, but the, I started doing yoga. I'm 42. I started when I was, I think 23, something like that. And I, I, you look the same exact way I, I saw ah! you, I don't know, 2013. (laughs) Thank you. I've upgraded some ways, but yeah, I mean, go, oh yeah, there's so much to say about that even, but thank you. I, you know, yoga is interesting because it forms a different strength. And I think a lot of it has like a couple things for me was understanding the difference between discomfort and pain. There's a huge difference there. And can you, can you sit in your discomfort? Can you breathe through it to, to kind of untie the knots? And in that, like, what are you discovering about yourself? Right. And then it's like, you take that and then that's so applicable to, to life. Right. And to, to the challenges of life. That's so funny because I'm doing hypno um, birthing classes. So so to like help me prepare for birth and like make sure I'm in the right mental state. And what you said is exactly what we practice. It's like breathing through the pain and knowing that it's just discomfort and it's going to go away and you can handle it and your body was made for it. So it's so legit. I mean, (laughs) think about you, you, I know you did some Muay Thai and, and, and like you said, and I've, you know, we've known each other for quite some time. So I've seen, you know, you hit the weights, you like the hit workouts. I mean, would you say that a lot of that has also transferred into, to your ability to stay strong and, you know, kind of face adversity? Even when you think about now, 2020, it's like, has any of that transferred into your life and your process to support you? Yeah, definitely. I think working out in general has always helped me mentally. Um, you don't think about how great working out is for, not only for your body, but for your mind. Um, so when, even when the pandemic hit, I was like doing like 30 minute workouts here and in, in home and I, I got like the live workout train and I loved it. Um, and I did, I've done it throughout the whole pregnancy and I feel like it's super important. Um, yeah. stay active when you're pregnant. Um, just cause there's a lot of changes going on and you just gotta be mentally and physically. Okay. <laughs> it's almost like you're going to war and you need to have your strongest armor on ready to go. Right. I mean, a lot of my girlfriends are mommies and I've been, you know, there with them through their pregnancies. And I mean, legit, one of my very best friends who's like the goat of beach volleyball, when she had her daughter who's seven years old now, I, she was training up to like maybe two weeks or so up to, to the point of birth. But, you know, she does it smart. But the whole idea was, yeah, you want your body to be strong. You want your mind to be strong because you're about to bring out a human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to war. <laughs> Go to war. Yeah. It's so crazy. Um, I would love to know, what are some of the hardest decisions you've had to make in your life that have ended up being the smartest, some of the smartest decisions? So just one little kind of note I can say, when I think about you and your career, you know, you're out there, you're, you know, wearing what you wear and doing what you do. Like, was it hard for you to all of a sudden, I mean, was pregnancy planned? This is just one example. Um, was pregnancy planned and then like having to share that with the world? Mm-hmm. Uh, the pregnancy was not planned. We were actually planning on like traveling all this year and like we had big plans. We had like four or five trips already planned. Um, and we're like, we're going to do that. And then maybe next year, 2021, we'll think about 
the baby and stuff. Um, but it all happened the way it was supposed to be. And, um, it's been such a blessing to actually slow down because, you know, us, we like, go, go, go. So, um, it's been great. I, I've taken the time to just like really get to know myself, get to know what I like, start meditating, um, spend time with my man who would normally be working a lot. So it's been a blessing. And as far as like big changes, I think that, um, just making the choice to love myself more than other people and not, not let other people in my life that are not good for me. Um, that, that was like the turning point. Like I said, I did a lot of therapy. Mm -hmm. I did ayahuasca. I did all kinds of things <laughs> to kind of um, help me get through the trauma from my past. I was in a really bad relationship for about seven years off and on, and it was very traumatic and very abusive. And I now looking back, I don't understand how I could ever let myself like be treated that way. But it's because you don't. It's it's almost like you don't know it any better until you start really working on yourself. And as soon as I start working on myself and putting the focus on me, I notice like I'm attracting better people, whether it's friends or men or whatever. It's just my, my, everything is lighter in my life. And I think that at that point, when I met my, my man now, it was like, okay, this is different. This feels good. This, there's no anxiety. We're happy. We don't have to try so hard. And also, like, I can't imagine being pregnant or having a baby and still having all that baggage. So I just feel like it, it was the perfect timing for me. So that's, that's so awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, that it's so interesting, right? Like, wisdom. You got to you got to experience hard shit to really be able to offer to to offer yourself real wisdom and then there's wisdom that you can share to to others, right? Your 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 children to your friends to whoever, but had you not gone through that, you know, experience um with your ex and 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 really I think it's it's one part going through the experience, but it's what you did after. It's like how you decided again to invest in the ways that you could, you know, shift whatever that was in you that would allow you to be in that kind of position. Right. That's a lot. Of, Cause again, I'm just pointing out, say that again. I said, changing your perspective. Right. So, so one thing that I'll just say it is very personal, but my ex used to say like, Oh, when are you going to like settle down and not walk around and ha in no clothes in a bikini? Like, you're going to get old and nobody's going to want you, blah, blah, blah. You need to settle down. He was very insecure about like my work. Mm. So, so it made me almost feel worthless. Like it was like, okay, like nobody likes me and it's all about how I look. And I, I felt very like almost like sexualized. Yeah. Um, so I had to do a lot of work and then I started focusing on like the gratitude. Oh my God. I've had this steady job for how long? It's a beautiful job. I get to travel. I get to watch these amazing fights. I get to be surrounded by great people. Like, this is fun. Like, I'm so lucky. So everything shifted. <laughs> and now I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, I love it. Like, there, but there was at a point where I almost felt guilty doing it. So mm. it was weird. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's common. You know, I, I do believe that it, it's, it's, it's all life is all about how we're, how we're looking at it, you know, and, and the way we're looking, the direction we're looking is really where we're taking ourselves, Right. And so it's so important to have these moments where you can check yourself. And if yeah. you need to shift perspective, you do it, you do what it takes. I love that you meditate now. Meditation has been in my life for, for a long time. Um, and it's, it's literally like a non-negotiable for me. You know, it's like how I start my morning every morning. I had communicate with my future self. Like she's incredible. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> what is How, how long have you been meditating for? What is that practice like for you? Well, I I'm new at it. So I think I, it started obviously with like the hot yoga, like you mm -hmm. do the Shavasana at the end, but, um, I was like, Oh, that's enough for me. But then the pet, it, and my girlfriends were 
they texted me, they want, they're like, you want to be a part of this uh, meditation challenge? And I'm like, all right. It was Deepak Chakra's meditation. And it was basically like, you have to do, do a meditation in the morning. It's all like recorded and stuff. Um, I think it's 15 minutes and then like a 15 minute task where you're like writing in your journal. So that really held me accountable. And I noticed after, cause I stuck to it. I was like, this isn't so bad. Like it actually makes me feel good and I have better days because of it. So I decided that I was going to keep going and I have like a meditation app for, um, pregnancy. And then I have, I do like, uh, Tony Robbins, the, the energizing one. Mm -hmm. I love, um, Master Co. There's all kinds of different ones that I like. I, I sometimes I do the uh, frequencies, the different chakras. It just depends on what mood I'm in. Um, but I'm I'm still new at it, but I, I I love it, and I do see a difference from doing it every day. Yeah. There's real science behind it. I think some of the hard parts, you know, are these um, kind of perceptions and the labels that come with meditation. And, you know, I'm such a science girl, man. So it's fun for me to be like, dude, you don't have to be a fucking hippie to meditate. Like this is some science back shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, It's like, it just, you know, I feel one of the greatest pieces that you gain from meditation is self-awareness, right? And to, so self-awareness allows you to become more self-connected and mm -hmm. I would let, like, is that, do you feel like that is happening with you? Definitely more self-aware and just more gentle and loving towards myself. I think. Yeah. Not perfectionist and control freak and everything else that I tend to be, uh, just lets me, yeah, just chill out. <laughs> it's hard because it's like, you, you know, you're driving your, that, you know, we're to people who are watching or, or can't see the, the hand, the, you know, that, that kind of relentlessness that drive that will, I mean, that serves you, that has served you in a lot of ways. I know that to be the case in my life as well, but I also know, and I feel like you're, you know, speaking to this so, you know, beautifully now as well too, is that it's this, it's really how I like to frame it. Or Annie is like masculine and feminine energy, you know, and when you have, this harmony between them, it's like there is more of a suppleness that you're living from. And I mean, I, I like this is something that came to me in meditation one day. She was like, she, my future self, my North Star, she was like, you can't snap a string. And it's so fucking cool when you hear shit like that because you're, you're like, you hear a string, you're not thinking, oh, that's just, that's like, you know, some strong weapon. But it's true. You try snapping a string. It's really fucking hard. But what makes it so difficult is just how it can move, right? So I think that uh, it makes perfect sense when you say, you know, you're able to cultivate more self-love even through, you know, an act like this of meditation because it all really connects, right? And then, yeah, I feel like I'd love to know actually, you're, you know, the difference between how this self-love that you're experiencing now in your life, how this has helped to develop, shift and shape your self-confidence versus, you know, five, 10 years ago or however many years ago. Yeah. I think like how you said the feminine and the masculine, I think because I was so hurt back then, not only from like stuff, like seeing stuff in in the public eye, like forums and stuff like that. And my ex being crazy. Um, I put on this big, tough barrier that was like, there's nothing that can really. And that was just, that was a big front. It, it's not who I am. Who I am is loving, nurturing, caring, feminine. Um, it's okay to have both. So just being aware of that meditating just re really helped me see that, that it's okay to connect with your feminine and uh, be that divine feminine that you really are. So. Yeah. It's powerful <laughs> energy. Do you have a morning routine or ritual? Um, I try to meditate right away. I, I decide which one I want to do, whether it's the chakras or master co or, whatever. I, I, I'm trying to get off the, uh, guided meditation. Cause I feel like my mind kind of, um, wanders a little bit more with that, but, um, 
just meditating right away for 10 to 15 minutes, have my coffee, and then I'll go ahead and uh, check emails and everything else. <laughs> and handle your business. Girl, you got mad business. Girlfriend <laughs> box. Let's talk about that for a minute. So when did that idea come about? And can you kind of share with the, our audience or listeners to what Girlfriend Box is all about? Yeah. So I started Girlfriend Box around three years ago now, and it started as a fashion box. So it's a fashion, it had a, a fashion item like a dress, makeup, beauty, and jewelry. And as the time goes on, like we were doing different themes for the boxes. We were trying to just really do too much. Like I was doing everything from packing to shipping to the modeling, the marketing, social media, like it was a lot. Um, and to try to make girls happy in the fashion world, like <laughs> everyone's different. So I noticed that no matter what, the girls really liked the jewelry. Like there was no complaints on jewelry. There was no returns. So um, my partner in jewelry, I was like, I stayed in really good contact with. And I, at some point I was like, there needs to be a change. Maybe we, you, we, we can partner up and, and change everything. And so we partnered up recently. We actually launched in July and it's brand new logo, brand new look, brand new website. It's super easy to use. You just go in and you can either gift it to yourself, your wife, your best friend. Um, you say whether she's boho, classic or edgy. And then you can say you want it one month, every month or five times a year. And then the five times a year, you can put in all your um, dates. Mm. The, your anniversary, her birthday, whatever you guys celebrate. And uh, it comes in this little box. <laughs> Cute. Yeah. It's packaged really beautifully. It's really good, high quality uh, jewelry. So it's amazing. She is. She's going to get something that she loves. That's and so we, cool. Yeah. Thank you. It was geared towards men because I was doing, I was being silly on Instagram one day and doing stories like I was just taking out stuff in my closet and they, these guys were like oh my girlfriend would love that my girlfriend would love that and I'm like okay I think I have something here because there's so many subscription boxes out there for women but nothing that really focuses on men gifting to their loved ones so that's how girlfriend box was created Okay. So hold on. That's dope. First of all, what a rad and thoughtful and supportive gift, because we know that there's a lot of stress around what do I get my girl? <laughs> you know? So this like helps you're helping a lot of men out there. Um, one thing I want to point out and, and, and kind of tease apart is, you know, when I think about your career and all the things that you've done, I mean, you've, graced the cover of playboy magazine. You've done so much. You've launched this business. I identify that there has had to have been self-trust, very mm -hmm. potent moving, you know, like that you're building your life from, right? Because, you know, for example, Girlfriend Box, like that was very receptive of you to pick up on that. Like, I think I have something here, but it's not always easy to execute, you know, especially when you don't fucking know for sure. And, you know, we love certainty as humans, right? That's why there's a lot of tripping going on. Cause we're like, Oh my God, what's going to happen. But yeah. I would like to know, I'd like to talk to you about self-trust because I, I do feel like that, that that's something that I really pick up on with you, that you have navigated your life to where you are now um, with a, a strong sense of self-trust. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that I have self-trust, uh, but it's been built over time. And it's also about knowing that you can't control everything and not, and not everything's always going to look perfect or feel perfect. For instance, like our business, was not doing well um, in the first couple of years. It was so stressful. It was more stressful than fun, but it's a learning process. And right now, now it's finally starting to pick up where we um, have some momentum and it's, I have hope for it. But I, I actually believed in the company from the beginning. It just, it just didn't look, it doesn't look the way I thought it would a couple of years ago. So mm -hmm. it's about being open, I think, to change and not being able to control every single aspect and being okay with that. Yeah. And what about, what would you say, where does courage come in? Because, you know, I'm sure that 
there's been many moments, I imagine, um, in your life where you may have been, you know, felt fear to move forward towards something and take that thing or say yes, or even say no. How has courage played a role in your life to where you are now? I think it's just uh, courage for me is just taking a chance and letting go and knowing that no matter what the universe has your back and you're going to be taken care of whether it works out or not, it, whether it changes over time, like it's all going to be uh, the way it's supposed to be. I love that. Yeah. I feel like, you know, when you, when you are operating from a very empowered place, it's like work out or not work out, you got it. So you'll make the not working out work out for you. Right. <laughs> Has that happened with you? you like letting people know, like I tell people like, our bit the business was not doing well it costs it costs me more to keep the business going than to have it um yeah so so it's just uh it's about letting go and not having control all the time which yeah because <laughs> i i can be a control freak yeah well you know what you like you know what you want so you have to loosen the grip sometimes to kind of let the magic of life kind of show you some direction or some new ideas and it's hard, right? It's, it's fucking hard to, to trust, right? Yes. It feels, but it's actually, I know in my life, there have been so many moments where that was the best action for me to do was just to like, to fucking let go. Like, yeah, yeah my best. I've, 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 I literally don't have the answer. I just, you know, it seems so counterintuitive, Yeah, but it's right. But it served you served me. The most loving things you can do for yourself or for others to trust. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a huge, I feel that when you are, you know, positioning yourself to take chances, to bet on yourself, to go for the thing. I mean, you know, you're, you're building this confidence. You're saying you're worthy of the effort. And then yeah. that really supports that you know, the fortification of self-trust. It just makes it easier to make, you know, to bet on yourself, which is so important, right? Yeah, definitely. If you had a superpower or rather you do have a superpower or superpowers, what would you say that it is or they are? Oh, um, (laughs) (laughs) wow. That's a hard one. I guess it's keeping my cool because I think that the only person that has really <laughs> seen me not have my, not keep my cool is probably my, um, he calls me a little spicy Latina, but I, <laughs> I've grown so much that I'm like, you don't even know. <laughs> like, <laughs> being spicy is my superpower, but I have also been able to control that. Um, control your emotions, think logically before you speak is a superpower in itself. I, um, that's actually what I was thinking. That yeah. When you, yeah. Cause it's, that's, it's hard. And then you, I know you got the spice. I got the spice, but I love that you just said like logic before, you know, it's like before you get emotional and you have this um, conversation with yourself about how you want to proceed. And that's yeah. a fucking superpower because most people are reactive. Yeah, I think you can see it in the world right now. Everybody's reacting before they think and see and re- research and learn about things. It's just it's so emotional and it's a roller coaster right now. Emotion. I agree. No, I agree. I think that's the power of observing. I'm such an observer. It's really interesting to just pay attention. Like before, you kind of throw yourself out there or you know, place judgment or have this final thought. It's just like you're just paying attention to things. And it's, it's, it's fascinating to see how easy it is to be swept with the tides and to be reactionary. Um, and it really, you know, for me personally, I, I want to run the other way. Like as much as I can create space between reaction and, you know, allowing myself to process and say, is this really what I want to feel about this? Is this really how I want to proceed? You know, I'm always working. Meditation is a tool for that, you know, to build that space so that I can, I mean, then you're, you know, I feel like you're, you're a much more powerful warrior. 
uh, when you, when you have that space and you're able to, you know, operate that way and observing is a huge pathway to that. Yeah. When I agree totally. And I think, um, being pregnant too, like normally I would, I mean, I did, I got really upset with all the things that were going on. I was like, I feel like I was depressed for like a week or two where I, it, everything that I saw on Instagram or whatever just made me cry. I was just like, this is so horrible. And normally I would react and I would be like, you know, like reacting to what, whatever I see and whatever I feel, but being pregnant, like really like made me like take a step back. And I was like, okay, I need to turn my social media off for a little bit. I need to relax. I need to do my research and know what's going on, but also don't get super emotionally involved in, with everything that's going on because yeah, it's just not healthy. It's not healthy. Yeah. And now you're thinking, I'm sure about you and your babe, right? It's like, there's two people. I don't, oh, and stress him out. <laughs> right. It's a real so, thing. Actually, your cortisol levels impact your babies while you're yeah. making your baby. It's a real thing. What's your favorite part about being pregnant? My favorite part is just feeling him kick. Like it's the feeling in the world. Like yeah. to know, like I wake up and I feel him like, hi. And then I go to, bed, <laughs> I feel him kicking and I just know he's getting bigger. It's really, really amazing. That's so exciting. If you can to say something to him right now that he will look back and listen or watch um, this conversation, what would it be? It would be, you are a powerful little star seat and you, you will accomplish so much. Everything that you put your heart to. I love that. You're special. So, I, I mean, I, I'm sure every parent says that, but <laughs> he's going to be special. <laughs> For sure. No, I think that your parents and your environment, your upbringing has a lot to do. You know, it's funny. You can have, um, it can go either way. You can have an epic, very nourishing, you know, enriched uh, upbringing, parents, family, you could also not have that. And then that could be the catalyst for your greatness. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about self-confidence. Um, I want to talk about, you know, just like the relationship with you and your body, because this is a big, I mean, I've got a lot of women who listen to this podcast and watch this podcast now. And I mean, you know, how we feel about ourselves. And a lot of that has to do with what we see. It mm -hmm. really does impact the way we just function in life. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you don't feel great, um, about yourself, you're, I, I, there's going to be a disconnect on the level of performance and potential that you can actually express and live in the in your life. Right. Yeah. So I would love to just talk about, you know, body consciousness, you know, your, um, and that relationship with yourself from, you know, 10 years ago to now being pregnant, how has that shifted for you? What, what could you offer women who, um, you know, don't feel secure in themselves from that perspective? I would say if you're not feeling secure, it's something that you have to work on both physically and mentally. And sometimes the beauty of that is it goes hand in hand. So you're doing something physically, it helps you mentally. Um, that's what I think uh, the hardest part about fitness and like being f fit is the mentality. You're like, oh, I don't want to work out. I don't want to get out of bed. But once you start, it's like, you can't stop because it feels so good mentally, um, not just physically. So I think, I think uh, about 10 years ago, I was like obsessive over weight. I was obsessive over this, my size. Um, now I'm just like, okay, if it feels good, if it looks good, um, I feel good. I'm not going to get on the scale every day. I'm not going to obsess over being a size zero. Um, a lot of people have asked like, oh, how do you feel about your body changing? And I think I was like, I know my body's going to change, but at the same time, I'm confident 
I trust myself. I trust my body. And I know that I'm going to do everything to be healthy. Um, and <laughs> if whatever happens happens, but I feel like, um, the, the pressure of like being perfect is not there anymore. Whereas before it definitely was like, I would be a hot mess if I was pregnant a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely would be, but, um, it's just about, it's about physically and mentally doing the work. If you want to feel good about yourself, um, it goes hand in hand with each other doing, doing the mental work mm -hmm. that I did. Um, doing, I'm going to say it again. Ayahuasca is <laughs> the, best, the best therapy I could ever do in my life. Um, and it really showed me like, we are all goddesses. Like I am goddess. We are all goddess. Uh, and it, it made me see all of the women around me even more beautifully. So, yeah. I love that. I love that so much. Yeah. No, I, and I love that you talk about the mindset piece so much. I mean, that's what my entire brand is built off of because if you don't have that on lock, it's like, it doesn't, you could have the most kick-ass figure, this, that perfect, whatever perfect. And if this shit is not function, if this, if this is not on your team, yeah. it doesn't matter. Right. But when you, when you, when you're on your team and you're like, I love me, I got me. And like, it's not about perfection and it's about feeling good. And it's about doing the things also. It's not just like, okay, so I'm going to sit down and just, you know, become whatever you like, you've executed this in your life. You still do. And you just spoke to it beautifully. It's about doing that work too, to make yourself feel good. You don't feel like working out. Well, get up and do it. And then watch in a couple minutes, you're going to feel a lot better for it. And that's really going to contribute to, I mean, listen, I used to, when we met, I wasn't lifting heavy weights because I, you know, when I was a teenager, uh, I, I tore my knee three times, uh, Taekwondo epic kick, tore my ligament meniscus. It was like two years in and out of surgery. And, you know, prior to that, I, I girl, I had like a fucking eight pack, like my jeans are sick and I never thought about, you know, my physique because I never had to, you know? Yeah, And then all of a sudden it's like me and I was on the American diet and, you know, and it was just like, whoa, all of a sudden you just jump up several sizes, you know, unfortunately when I gained weight, I gained it all over, but it was still this like outer body experience for me because I was not familiar with that. Like, who are you right now? So I was like 16, 17 years old and, you know, I didn't have the tools. I wasn't, you know, I was active running, surfing, but I, I didn't have the knowledge that I have now. And you know, what would end up happening is it would be, you know, several years, decades of just investigating, uh, trying this, do, you know, all the things to try and get back to homeostasis until, you know, I really got deep in science and biology and I cracked the code. One of the biggest supportive tools that helped me crack the code to get back into form all these years later was when I shifted my mind um, around the, the, the thought of lifting heavy weights and what that would do, because that used to, you know, scare me of like, Oh, you're going to be, you know? Yeah. And, uh, especially cause I already have, you know, and, um, but the funny thing is when I shifted that mindset and I mm -hmm. started listening to my brothers, even Jen Gleason, who I found because of you, who I love, who's also about to have a baby. She's so great. The part, <laughs> how many weeks? Like one week apart. That's crazy. And you're both so cute. I mean, your figures are just like so cute. It's like you turn to the side, then you see the pregnancy otherwise. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I just really started pivoting this whole thought process. And I was like, man, I, you know, I want to feel my strength. Like if anything, I'm fucking lucky that I'm actually naturally a strong woman. So, right. But I wasn't owning that before because I was so afraid of what, you know, this bulking, this, that, and the opposite happened. I shrunk. <laughs> yeah. The abs, like the whole thing. And what's so interesting, and this kind of bridges me to a question that I wanted to ask you. Um, it's so interesting, Ariana, because the judgment that you, like sometimes I wear crop tops all the time and I have a six pack, whatever, abs, whatever you want to fucking call it. And it's interesting to see how people respond now versus, you know, when I wasn't as cut, um, you get different reactions. Like there's a lot of judgment and faces that get put on you 
for just being a woman in shape, right? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that totally. Um, which really bugs me because I think that it, it's a beautiful thing when you see a strong, in shape woman. And it doesn't mean that they're, you know, not having fun, not having pizza on the weekend. Like it is discipline, yes. But I don't know. I, I find it very confusing as to why women get mad when they see. Sorry, I mean people in general, but I, I think it's a lot of women um, when they get mad when people are in shape or feel good about themselves. At the end of the day, like you, you can separate if you can separate yourself from the body. Like, okay, are you a good person? Do you feel good inside? That's number one. You've been given this body, this vessel. Now let's take care of it. That's number two. It goes hand in hand. Um, so I think when people are like that and they're judgmental, it's because they're not happy on the inside yeah. or like starving themselves to be, you know, physically what they think is supposed to, be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you can get one or the other. You can get the women who are just, I mean, I've had women in the gym, like, oh my gosh. And they're praising and they're, you know, and it's, it's really lovely. It's so kind. I've had this woman once she's like, that's what I want to look. I was like, no, no. <laughs> you want to look like you, like the yeah. best version of you. But thank you. I get that. And I love, you know, I appreciate that, that energy and that it's, you know, it's a compliment. Um, yeah. But I'm such an advocate of like you getting into your best you. And, and there isn't, I mean, comparison is such a fucking disease on so many levels, right? It really is. And, but we're all unique in our own different ways. We're all beautiful. We're all goddesses. Um, we're all different. So if you see that, the uniqueness, so many people are just trying to like look a certain way and it takes away from everything that you are. Your unique qualities are important. They're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Inside and out. Okay. Well, that makes me want to talk beauty with you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How could I not talk beauty with you? <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your, I mean, I'm sure that your beauty routine has shifted a lot, right? Just, um, or has it a little bit? Um, there's certain, you know, face stuff that I can't use like retinol and, uh, CBD it's controversial, but mm. I, I use it here and there throughout the pregnancy. Um, just cause I don't think it's, I'm not digesting it. It's more like a uh, topical on the skin and stuff. So it hasn't changed too much. I've gotten one facial because of COVID. Yeah. But other than that, I'm using my vitamin C, I'm washing, cleansing, um, using a night cream, using an eye cream, but it all has to be like without the chemicals that would hurt the baby. So <laughs> totally. I've been doing the same, the same routine, but with different products for since I was like, my twenties. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the formula and you just kind of change the products. Yeah. Like there. washing your face, even when you don't feel like it, especially now that I'm pregnant, I'm like, Oh, do I really have to wash my face? But oh. yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, it's a game changer. When people talk to me about makeup and you know, I'm like, well, what's your skincare like? Because it's, it's all starting from there. So if you don't have you know, a good face wash or things. I mean, it's, it's like the shampoo to your hair. You can have great product afterwards, but what really starts the process is your shampoo and, and conditioner. So it's a really important starting point. Um, I know that is hard for, for a lot of women to like do the washing. I'm a shower at night girl. Like you, nothing goes in my bed without a shower. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about goddess. I'm like, this is fucking sanctuary over here. I don't want any day street, nothing, <laughs> but it's so calming and relaxing to take a hot shower. It regulates your body temperature, optimizes sleep. Um, what about beauty tricks? Uh, even if it's not actual with the product or whatever, but like on the days where you wake up and you don't feel that beautiful, but you still got to handle business. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm into like essential oils and stuff to wake you up. Um, and it just makes everything smell better and just feel better and energized. So I just got started getting into those. Um, I have this Amazon, this thing I got from Amazon. It's literally like a, it's a face roller you keep in the fridge, 
the mm-hmm. freezer. And I use that to wake myself up if I have to go to work or whatever, do a shoot. Um, lymphatic massages too, especially right now, I'm retaining a lot of water in my knees and my legs and it hurts. So that you have to just keep on top of and self-love and indulge a little bit. (laughs) Do you journal at all? Um, that was one thing that I did start in the 21 day meditation. Um, but which I've been neglecting right now because we're in the middle of moving. Um, so it's been crazy. I'm eight months pregnant. We're moving, Um, we're moving to another state. So I have to get on it, but I do have my journal. It was right by my bedside and I was, um, doing at least five minutes of journaling at one point, but I haven't done it for like a month. Just being honest. (laughs) Yeah, no, for sure. It takes time. I've been writing my whole life and it's my best friend. I love it. I actually designed a journal that's going to come. I'll send you one, um, as a gift. It comes out this holiday. It's really special that there's artwork in it. I love that. Yeah. You'll love it, girl. It's so unique. Cause as a writer journaler, my whole life, I, 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 there's like, I want blank pages. I want lined pages. I don't, you know, I, it's not fucking stationary. Like there's real intention in this journal. Um, yeah. so I'll definitely, I'll definitely say, I mean, it, like the whole thing for me is I, I don't want it to feel like a workbook. It's like, if yeah. it's like, you know, when you go, I mean, you have traveled around the fucking world. So you know this very well. You've been at so many different hotels and mm-hmm. you know, those ones that just have like the, the furniture, the design, the, the whole aesthetic just has a different feeling and it makes you want to be there. Feel yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what I want for the journal. That's what's being developed is like, it's like, uh, the space where, you just want to go spend time in. So it doesn't feel like, Oh, I got a journal. Cause I know it's good for me or it's a workbook. You know, it's like, I want to, I want to unleash myself and explore in this space. And so that's, that's where it's, uh, that's what, that's what's be, I'm giving birth to girl. <laughs> yeah, that's exciting. It's really so, cool. Things probably similar, but I'm sure it's very different. Um, the five lists of happiness. You're you making of- that. No. Um, I have the, the, um, journal. So I was used doing literally five, five, five lists of happiness. It's five minutes of your day. Um, and it makes you feel really good afterward. So it's probably similar, but very different. Yeah. (laughs) There's, you know, the, you are the path is the name of this journal and it's essentially self-actualization. So it's a guided journal to help you get deeper into that self-awareness and that self-connection and where you're going to cultivate real self-love and self-confidence. And that's, you know, so I dropped some prompts and some questions that I give the invitation to ignore, like by all means do whatever, but it's just there because some people, I know, uh, just cause I've talked to so many people about journaling now, it, it can be very daunting to people. It's like, what do I do? Like, it has to be some profound, you know, like you have to be really set up to journal. And I'm like, no, you don't like, you just got to drop in and how I frame it is just fucking roll ink, like streamline of consciousness, you know, and let go. And, you know, not only is it, is it supportive tool to, to help you get this connection and all those pieces I just told you, but how about, I have over fucking 20 years of writing in my home and that's all my life, you know, I mean, not all my life, you know, but just to have record of that is incredible for so many reasons. Yeah. Blackmail. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just found my diary from like high school. Was it high school or middle school? I was like, Oh my God, this is so <laughs> and my, I was there and it was kiss this person. He's like, who'd you kiss? <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm throwing this away. <laughs> it's so fun though. I know it takes a lot of guts to be able to look at yourself. Like, did I really, was that, did that come out of me? I fucking did that. Yeah. Damn. But you know, I'm sure later, later in life, when you really don't give a fuck, you'll, you know, there's appreciation of like, Oh, look how cute I was for. <laughs> yeah. The evolution. <laughs> the evolution. Exactly. Okay. In three words, three characteristics about you that you feel have been really, really supportive to build, to, to have built this woman that you are and the life that you are living. 
Okay. Um, I would say authenticity, um, drive, and city drive and loving nurturing uh lo loving i think i'm really loving um once you get to <laughs> once you get to the core i'm a softie uh, but like i said like i always had this hard shell um and it's starting to go away more and more which is cool cool to see the the evolution <laughs> well, I, feel, I feel i feel um fortunate because we haven't we've known each other for a long time but it's not like you know we've spent a lot of time together but ev those three that you just said i could i almost could have said it for you and i would i so feel and have you know received that um that soft side of you like it just thank yeah, you that's always been so <laughs> what you say that again it cut out i'm a softy and i think that i I know, like, I have a very good intuition of, like, good people. So my my guard kind of goes down when I know, like, this is a good person. Like, you're safe. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I relate to that. So true. Okay. So I have a couple of um, things that I'd like to ask my guests before we start wrapping up this conversation. Before I hit you with them, is there anything that we haven't spoken about that you wish people would ask you more or that's just top of mind, top of heart that you would like to live in this conversation? Hmm. Um, I think we hit a lot of them. No, you're good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So one of the questions I love to ask my guests is if you had a magic wand, I know you do, and you could uh, give the masses one positive habit that would have a huge positive ripple effect in their life what would it be and why it would be to before anything in the morning when you start your day just think of three things you're grateful for it's a lot harder to i think be depressed or be angry it's kind of impossible actually when you focus on what you're grateful for I love that. Yeah. Gratitude is, it's, it's gnarly. It's like a real weapon. <laughs> it really is. It really is. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. So final piece. Um, so I, I like to do this thing called rapid fire words and I give them to you rapidly. So it's just one word, but you do not have to be rapid in your response. So I say the word, whatever comes top of mind, top of heart, when you think of this world word, how it makes you feel, um, what it represents to you, please elaborate. Okay. 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 First word is love. Love is family, nurturing, baby, relationships. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So. Love it. Fear. Fear is uncertainty, hatred, division, everything that's kind of going on right now. Totally. It's very scary. I yeah, I agree with you. Uh, curiosity. Curiosity, adventure excitement like not knowing but it's almost like i'm curious to know how this little man's going to be it's exciting um yeah <laughs> yeah that's a that's a yeah that's a real life moment a lot of curiosity right there i love it um challenge challenge would be i think that to know that there's going to be so many challenges in the future to just be able to breathe through them um, and know that not everything's going to be perfect and not everything's going to look perfect, uh, but just to take it day by day. All the changes, all the challenges. Um, I, I don't know what's going to come with parenthood. Um, so that's, that's a challenge and that's scary because I'm used, used to having everything 
controlled. <laughs> so, so yeah. It's Chal- exciting. Yeah. Uh, next word is courage. Courage. Courage to know that everything's going to be okay. Everything is happening the way that it's supposed to happen. Love it. Uh, confidence. Confidence. Confidence coming not only from your physical vessel, but inside. Like, you know you're a good person. You know that you're doing good for the world. Like, I think that's that helps um, your confidence. I see so many beautiful women um, in my industry and they can be the most beautiful girls and have like the ugliest inside or like be super, super insecure. And it's almost confusing, but it's because they haven't done the work on the inside. So, um, yeah. Yeah. The inner outer piece. It's huge. It's like one piece. Okay. Almost there. Resilience. Resilience is knowing that you're worth it. Moving, keep keeping uh, moving forward no matter what, um, and accepting the challenges that do come with grace, and knowing that if you're in a dark place, that those times will pass. I love it, it's one of my favorite words. Okay, final word, (laughs) final word, girl excellence. Excellence is. Knowing that life is not always excellent, it's okay, it's okay and that still makes everything excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a flash of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> Did you make that movie? It was such a good... No, it's... Well, um, yeah, I'm a child of the 80s, so it's like... <laughs> I think they just came out with a new one, actually. Bill and Ted's, Keanu Reeves, and I forget the co-star's name. But anyways, that was rad. Ariane, girl, you, you're a gem. I so, so appreciate, truly, that you took time on a whim to be here with me. And I'm so grateful that we got to capture this moment of your life, of you in this you know, beautiful chapter as you're getting ready to be a mommy. And I'm just, I'm, I, yeah, like from the day one girl, I'm, I'm proud of you. I am supportive of you and I'm excited for you and all that is coming your way. Because if there's one thing and there are several things that I've really picked up on about you is like, girl, you just keep going and you keep growing and you do it from a very authentic place. And I fucking love that. So. Oh, thank you. Same to you. You're amazing. So I girl. Thank you. So everything will be in the show notes, but best place uh, for our listeners and viewers to find you girlfriend box. Can you share? So you can find me on Instagram at Ariani Celeste, Twitter at Ariani Celeste, Facebook, the real Ariani. And then girlfriend box is at girlfriend box or www.girlfriendbox.com check it out. If you're looking for a gift, it's, you're going to want to check it out. (laughs) Perfect. All right, mama. Thank you so much. All right, you guys catch you later.